Welcome to Nergasm, and today we're going to be going over Legion Episode 4. Oh my god. <laughs> Guys, this fucking show is blowing my mind hole. Oh my goodness. How in the world do you keep doing this? With only four more episodes to go, I don't want it to end. Oh my goodness. So we find out exactly why David ended up going into a coma in the last episode, alright? It turns out that even though Potonomy went into his memories with the whole group... When David went from the doctor's office into another place, right, in his memories, he actually created an astral plane and traveled to it. So him and Sid, him, his little boy version of him, and Sid traveled to an astral plane. That's why Potonomy couldn't find them and get them out. I mean, that's freaking awesome, guys. Come on. How many times do we have to figure out how freaking powerful David is that even when he was unconscious, he was able to create an astral plane and, like, travel there? And he took Sid with him. That's freaking ridiculous, dude. This guy is crazy powerful. We also find out that, you know, the Division 3 has his sister as well as the doctor who was treating him when he was over there, you know, for his split personality disorder. Of course, we know Division 3, they're not exactly that smart. They seem like they're just, you know, like guns who just want to kill mutants and shit like that. And they're like, you know what? This is the doctor that had no idea he had powers. This is a doctor who was given his medical profession that David was just crazy. So let's take him, because clearly he has something to do with everything that's been happening. So, you know, we'll keep him here, and he'll figure out what the hell David really was, and he'll give us zero information, but we'll just torture the shit out of him and give him really crappy, you know, un unnutritious meals. That's a good thing. Let's do that. We're smart. We're great. We're going to stop all the mutants in the world. Fucking idiots. That's what Division 3 is. Division 3 is a bunch of fucking idiots. We also find out that the doctor and Carrie Loudermilk, you know, the girl who's always like trying to fight and stuff, they're actually the same person. That's his mutant ability, is that he has like another person living inside of him and they switch out every now and again. And even though he ages when he's out, she doesn't age unless she comes out. So it kind of brings up this whole thing like what's going to happen when he dies? Is she still going to be alive? Is she, you know, just going to end up being the main body now? And then she can't switch back anymore. I mean, I don't know, but it's freaking crazy that she's like gung-ho, kung-fu, kick-ass. And he's like this smart scientist. And it, it it's it's really like the best version of different sides of the same coin. I, I freaking love that. Now going back to the whole thing about the astral plane. We get to see Melanie Bird's husband. He shows up like as a hallucin hallucination. Well, not a hallucination. I'm sorry. That's dumb. He shows up as a projection in a scuba diver suit so we find out that this dude is in the fucking basement frozen all right and i'm just like these motherfuckers have a frozen body locker in the basement that's that's not okay that's weird that's sketch that's like super sketch all right but it turns out that he's in the astral plane he's not dead he's in the astral plane and david went too far into the astral plane and now he can't get his ass out he's super powerful but he can't get his ass out melanie's husband goes and you know he rescues david and he takes him back to like this weird 70s hippie iceberg lounge looking ass area and he's like we're safe in here and i've been here forever and it, you get a sense of how long that dude's been stuck on the astral plane because he's like hey is free love still a thing and are women still not wearing bras and david's like nah man it's the fuck what, how long have you been shit man what the fuck is happening we also learned that melanie's husband oliver knows a lot about what's going on he knows that david has powers he knows that david has this thing that is chasing him. Of course, we know it as the devil with the yellow eyes. But Oliver says that it's some kind of parasite. It's not another part of him. It's not like Mojo like people thought. It's a parasite that's attached itself to him. And it's hunting David. And while they're in the little iceberg lounge thing, David's safe. But if he goes out, David's going to be fucked. I don't know about you, but I would have personally stayed in the iceberg lounge a little bit. Not like permanently. Just maybe I would have asked him some questions. Figured out how to get a handle on my powers. I mean, if you're on the astral plane, does time even really move? the same for you I, I highly doubt it but it was really cool to see one thing that they put inside you can actually see that the uh the little circle ladder that he climbs when he's trying to get up to the iceberg place it's in the same shape as the earrings that his ex-girlfriend has later on in the episode and speaking of things hunting david and parasites fucking with his brain we all saw the angriest little boy in the world in the last episode which was completely terrifying i almost shit my pants i mean that the only thing scarier than the little boy is is you know, the devil with the yellow eyes. And Sid is seeing stuff now. Sid is losing her mind. Sid was connected to David, you know, after they touched and she saw shit and she freaked out, blah, blah, blah. But now she's seeing the little boy in the real world. 
or you know quote unquote what we think the real world is nothing in this show is certain everything question everything nothing's real believe half of what you see and none of what you hear everything's fucking crazy this whole world is twisted as shit but she starts seeing the little boy and when her and Patonomy go to try and interview the girlfriend the ex-girlfriend sorry she gets really upset about that she's like that's the ex-girlfriend I'm the new I, I'm the new new that's the old hoe okay she gets really upset about that she's kind of possessive which, I mean, I guess is probably good for him because he's fucking crazy, so they kind of deserve each other a little bit. It turns out that David's best friend wasn't Lenny. David's best friend was Benny. Some old white man who was just always doing drugs with with David, and they're like, no, you mean Lenny? And she's like, no, I mean Benny. Now, I mentioned in the last video that Lenny was supposed to be played by a man, and they got Aubrey Plaza to play the character. But now I don't know if that was just a misdirect to mess with the fans of the show and... It was always supposed to be this way. Or maybe Lenny was supposed to be a dude and then Benny would just be a different looking dude. You know, I mean, like maybe Lenny was just going to be like a skinny white guy and then Benny was always supposed to be the older, overweight, white gentleman. So I, I don't know, but that was freaking crazy because in the memories, David remembers it as Lenny. It's a girl. And Lenny was in the first episode and Lenny got dead. Lenny got dead. What the fuck is wrong with me? Lenny got killed and... When Sid was inside of David's body, Lenny ended up halfway in a wall. But doesn't it seem strange that Lenny was the only one who died? Sid in David's body was able to just lock everybody in their rooms and completely phase out the walls with, you know, matter manipulation. But Lenny was the only one that ended up embedded inside a wall. It kind of begs the question, one, was Lenny ever real? Two, was Lenny actually being there just another one of David's powers? And, he, and again, Omega Level Mutant, David could easily make a person that other people could see and interact with, even if it was just a personality in his head. So maybe they never even really killed anybody. Maybe they just killed a manifestation that, you know, came to life with David's powers. I just want to take this moment to just talk about one thing real quick. Carrie is a fucking badass. Carrie jumps out this motherfucking window and she's like, all right, let's do this. She's like a little child with whimsical wonder, except with like savage bloodlust. And it's freaking crazy. She just jumps out this window and she's like, all right, my turn. I'm gonna kick some ass. Unfortunately, she does get her ass beat. I thought she had like super agility or whatever. That's not the case. She's just fucking crazy. Another epic use of David's powers. We see that as he's on the astral plane, he runs into Lenny slash Benny, Aubrey Plaza's character. And she starts talking to him about like, yo, listen, we need to get the fuck out of here. Okay, I don't have time for this. I got shit I want to do. And I'm just thinking, what? Oh my God, it's happening. It's finally happening. The personalities are coming out. And this, and even though it's just one personality, this personality is showing that, you know, it has the ability to have dominance on David's body and it wants to get the fuck out of there. All right. And it wants to go start just wrecking shit. So that was Oh my god, that was amazing. And the personality shows David what's happening with his friends. And the power I'm talking about is being able to see things that are nowhere near you, alright? Being able to see stuff from like way, 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 way far away that you shouldn't even know are happening. It's like this weird form of omniscience that just should not be possible, but again, Omega level mutant. You know what I'm saying? It's freaking crazy. And David shows that not only does he transport his psyche off the astral plane, he also transports his body to exactly where they are, right? Come on, that's insane, man. He that's he he teleported two different parts of himself to the same spot, no problem, and then moved the truck with his telekinesis. I was like, what? That's freaking epic. And to close off the episode, probably the creepiest thing I've seen all year long so far on any TV show. The guy with the weird eye and Sid, of course, if you saw the episode, they switched bodies. And when David showed up, they were still body switched. The guy with the weird eye, he gets away. And before he gets away, he takes a shot at David, but he ends up, you know, clipping Carrie Loudermilk in the shoulder. And the, and the doctor feels it too. The doctor was feeling everything that was happening. I think David snaps a little bit and he lets out what's inside, all right? He lets out the demon and Lenny. You can see that the demon's hand comes around David's shoulder, but then Lenny pops up the other side and she's like, yeah, yeah, we did it. Yeah. Oh, it's going to be good. Oh, shit's about to pop off in episode five. And let me tell you, shit is about to pop off in episode five. All right. We'll get to that promo in just a minute. I think Lenny and the devil with the yellow eyes have a way bigger connection than I originally thought. I thought they were just two personalities. I thought that Lenny was his friend, but apparently Lenny isn't even real and like more not real than she was before because it was actually a guy named Benny. And Lenny is possibly the devil with the yellow eyes. I don't want I, I don't want to confirm anything. Even though I saw it, I don't want to confirm anything. Because just because you see something in the show doesn't mean jack shit. So everything has to be speculation until we get a confirmation in the episode. Like, until I see it happen, everything has to be speculation. But I am almost positive that Lenny is the devil with the yellow eyes. 
and the devil has like multiple means to try and fuck with David and get out, take over the body, use the powers. I want to talk about one other Easter egg. There was also a little homage to a Legion X-Men Legacy comic book cover when they were in Dr. Poole's office. All right, you can see here that there's a portrait here and it has like a, like a guy with like stuff busting out of his head. It's like a bunch of other things. And then this cover here for the X-Men, num- for the X-Men Legacy number one shows like a fractured Legion's face, right? I think... I, I really think that that was supposed to be like a little homage to the comic books, which is freaking amazing. I love that stuff. Having said that, though, let's go on to the episode five promo, which will blow your fucking mind. Just promise me if you get lost, we get lost together. Next Wednesday. I know where they're holding Amy. I'll be going to get her. Be careful. There's a chance we've left the real world and that we're in David's world now. And which one? Save the girl. Get a snack. We can't lose him. He's too powerful. New people started putting all these ideas in his head. My whole life is a lie. Legion. Someone is taking over, and it's not David in the driver's seat anymore, man. David is not driving. David has a confidence that we had not seen. He's talking about going to rescue his sister. He's not worried. He's like, I'm going to go do it. I'll be right back. Whatever. Then we're going to get a snack and, you know, I don't know. Maybe we'll do some stuff when we get back. But David is not in control anymore. We see Lenny come out of, like, this mirror thing. And Lenny's talking to them. has, like, a really dark voice. And her voice starts warping and stuff like that when she's talking. Which means that, again, confirming, sort of confirming but until we actually see it, though. I don't know. The devil with the yellow eyes connection to her. We also see David using some of his powers, all right? One, she says that we don't know if we're in reality anymore. It could be David's reality, which means he pulled them into another reality. Omega level mutant. Two, we see him kind of just like blow these people's heads up in this one scene. Like, what? Insta death. I don't even. It's insane. And he looks like he's having fun while he's doing it, too, all right? Number three. At the end of the promo, we see him kind of like screaming and he's like, ah, oh my God, ah. and there's like a quick flash and we see this x-ray picture of what looks like the devil with the yellow eyes again, which means it's going to be a really heavy alternate personality, possibly devil with the yellow eyes confirmation episode. And oh my God, guys, I cannot wait. Every episode has been amazing. Every episode has been like a little gritty, a little dark, a little revealing. And this next episode looks like it's going to be straight up kick ass David crazy personality. Oh my God, new powers. Devil with the yellow eyes, hunting you down, run for your life, amaze balls! I cannot wait for this episode to come out, and I just, wow. And I'm going to end this video with an amazing little Easter egg that was in the promo, guys. An Easter egg that was in the promo. You see the scene right here where he is like in the straight jacket, and he's like, what, what? He's in the straight jacket, and he's like, whoa, I'm, I'm Legion, hear me roar. And that is so close to an actual comic book image that looks like this and again comic book homages i freaking love that i was complaining that i wish the season was longer but let me tell you the shit that they're doing in eight episodes all the respect they're playing to the comic books is freaking amazing and i love every second of it let me know what you guys think in the comments i want to hear it all guys thanks for watching if you're new stick around hit the subscribe button and i will talk to you guys later oh my god i'm gonna go rewatch episode four i'll talk to you guys later goodbye